Welcome back, everybody, to the Oprah interview. Three years later, we visited part three. Let's jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. The last thing that Megan said was that the palace took her driver's license, her passport, her keys, and she was essentially a prisoner there. Here's what she didn't mention. While all of those things were gone, she managed to go on 13 international uh, vacations in two years. So here's where she went without her passport. She went to Botswana. She flew to Norway to look at the Northern Lights and go whale watching. She flew from Toronto to join Harry in Jamaica. She flew to Botswana and Z Zambia, I think it said. Looks like on her honeymoon, they went to the Seychelles. They also went to Italy twice. She went to Toronto, Canada to visit Jessica Mulroney. They took two trips to the United States. One was a baby shower. One wants to watch Serena Williams play. Then they went to Spain by private jet. I mean, it, she, was, she went to Nice. She was all over the place, but claims that she was a prisoner. Next up, Megan started talking about her father and her sister. Listen to this. It was, it, if, it was if, it, if we're going to use the word betrayal, it's because when I asked him, when we were told by the comms team this is a story that was going to be coming out, which, by the way, the tabloids had apparently known for a month or so and mm -hmm. decided to hold until the Sunday before our wedding because they wanted to mm -hmm. create drama, um, which is also a really key point in all this. They don't report the news, they create the news. Um, we called my dad and I asked him and he said, no. So I can't, I mean, I look at Archie, I think about this child and I go, I can't, um, I genuinely can't imagine doing anything to intentionally cause pain to my child. I can't, I can't imagine it. Here's the interesting part about all this. First of all, she says she can't imagine hurting Archie, but yet she claims she wanted to kill herself while she was pregnant with him. Um, yeah, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Number two, she claims her father lied to her. Since then, we have found out that the photographer that took the pictures with her dad is a photographer that she works with on a regular basis and she's worked with since then. So there's a lot of talk that she set her dad up because she didn't want a relationship with him if she was going to marry Harry. Then she talked about her sister. And Samantha Marco, your half sister on your father's side mm -hmm. has written a, a supposedly tell all book mm -hmm. about you. What is, what is your relationship with her? I think it'd be very hard to tell all when you don't know me, but um, I grew up as an only child, which everyone who grew up around me knows. And I wished I had siblings. I would have loved to have had siblings. So I'm so excited to be pregnant so that Archie has someone. It was really interesting to, I mean, the last time I saw her must have been at least 18, 19 years ago. And before that, 10 years before that. Um, so you all weren't close, you didn't grow up together. No. She doesn't no. really know you. No, she changed her last name back to Markle in, I think she was in her early 50s at that time, only when I started dating Harry. Hmm. Now, of course, multiple pictures have been released that show Samantha with Megan at different stages throughout her life. They spent all holidays together. And by the way, it's being reported that Samantha used to go by and pick Megan up every day and drive her to school. Yes, they had a relationship. Of course, now we all know about the lawsuit because Megan lied. She said that Samantha changed her name to Markle when she started dating Harry. That's been proven to be an out and out lie. Here is a picture of Samantha's diploma that clearly says Samantha Markle. And by the way, here's the paperwork where she changed her name. What she did was not change her last name. Look at it. She changed her first name. She went from Yvonne Marie Markle to Samantha Markle. Please notice the date on the left side. This was done December 3rd of 1997. Megan also said, well, custody over three children, that's not true either. She also used to drive her to school every day. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on that lawsuit. Now, throughout the entire interview, Megan kept making parallels 
between her and Diana. And then, of course, Harry came out on the stage and he started doing the exact same thing. So one of the first things he did was admit that Megan was having mental health issues as far as he knew, and he didn't do a thing to help her. Got to do something for my own mental health, for my wife's, um, and for, for Archie's as well, because I could see where this was. You didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. I went, I went to a very dark place as well, but I, I, I wanted to be there for her. Did you tell other people in the family, I need to get help for her, we need help for no. her? That's just not a conversation that would be had. I guess I was ashamed of admitting it to them. Oh. And I don't know whether I don't know whether they've had the same whether they've had the same feelings or thoughts. I have no idea. Now, in my opinion, that might be the one and only honest thing that was said by Harry and with Megan agreeing so far in this interview. All right, let's move on to the next thing he said, which was that the family is controlled by fear of the tabloids, and that's why they have parties. Listen to this. There's a reason that these tabloids have holiday parties at the palace. They're hosted by the palace. The tabloids are. And with that, a lot of the journalists stepped forward and said, not only is that not true, but if it is true, where have their invitations been? Because they've never been to one of those parties. And of course, Harry and Meghan provided no proof of this allegation. All right, next. The next thing Harry said was that the family was jealous of Meghan after they came back from their Australian tour. Does this sound familiar? Oh, we're on the wrong side. We want to see home, don't want to see here. And that's all we could hear as we went down these crowds. And obviously, it wasn't you, Steph, nor was I. He took it out on me. He was jealous. I understood the jealousy, but I couldn't explain that I didn't ask for it. Next up, Harry complained about his UK security being removed and his father stopping his phone calls from going through. Listen to this. Um, I then got told short notice that security was going to be removed. By this point, courtesy of the Daily Mail, the world knew exact, our exact location. So suddenly it dawned on me, hang on a second, the borders could be closed. We're going to have our security removed. Who knows how long lockdown's going to be? The world knows where we are. It's not safe. It's not secure. Well, also, we probably need to get so out of So what here. security did you have at the time that was going to be removed? Uh, we had our UK security. So you got word from overseas that we're taking away your security. Why were they doing that? Their justification is a change in status. Um, of which I pushed back and said, well, is there a change of threat or risk? Um, and after many weeks of waiting, eventually I got the confirmation that no, the risk and threat hasn't changed. But due to our change of status, which we would no longer be a official working members of the royal family, though obviously what we proposed was sort of part-time, or at least as much as we could do without being fully consumed. The fact that we were planning on putting the announcement out on the 7th of January. So you just said that your dad stopped taking your calls. Why did he stop taking your calls? Because I took matters, and by that point, I took matters into my own hands. It was like, I need to do this for my family. And of course, what we have since learned is that even though they gave up their position as working royals, and even though they left the UK, they expected the taxpayers of the UK to continue to pay their security. Now, they were told during Mexit that there would be no more security, but I think they thought that it just wasn't going to happen. And then when it did, they were shocked. That's what I think. All right, moving on. Remember, Harry and Meghan said they fell into the streaming in Spotify because they had no plan and it hadn't even been on their radar. We found out that Harry and Meghan met with a now defunct streaming service called Queeby one year before Megxit. They were trying to sign on. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Unlike what you see in the movies, there's no class on how to how to speak, how to cross your legs, how to be royal. There's none of that training. That might exist for other members of the family. That was not something that was offered to me. So nobody tells you anything? 
No, nobody prepares you. No, I mean and of course, we found out that that was a lie. She actually took six months worth of Duchess lessons from Samantha the Panther Cohen. Yep. All right, moving on. My family literally cut me off financially, and I had to afford, afford security for, for us. Wait, hold, hold up. Wait a minute. Your family cut you off? Yeah. In the first half, the first quarter of 2020. But I've got what my mum left me. And yeah. without that, we would not have been able to do this. Now, you could feel sorry for Harry, or you could know that he has 16 million left to him by his mother, more than that left to him by his great grandmother, and he left out, he lied by omission, that his dad had been giving him millions every month up until he was cut off. And when he was cut off, his dad gave him a one time lump sum payment of millions of dollars, but he didn't mention that during the interview. All right, moving on. We never left the family and we only wanted to have the same type of role that exists, right? There's mm -hmm. senior members of the family and then there are non-senior members. As we said specifically, we're stepping back from senior roles to be just like several, I mean, I can think of so many right now who are all their royal highnesses, prince or princess, mm -hmm. duke or duchess, who earn a living, live on palace grounds, can support the queen if and when called upon. Mm -hmm. So we weren't reinventing the wheel here. Here's what she left out. If she's talking about Eugenie and Beatrice, yes, they have security when they're on royal business. Otherwise, no, they don't have security. They work regular jobs. They do not make money off their princess titles. They're just out in the public like everybody else. They pay rent for living on palace grounds. They don't get a free ride, but that's what Harry and Meghan wanted. They wanted a free ride. Now pay close attention to what Harry says in this segment. Meghan shared with us that there was a conversation with you about Archie's skin tone. Mm -hmm. What was that conversation? That conversation <laughs> I'm never going to share. Um, but at the time, at the time, it was awkward. I was a bit shocked. Um, can, you, can you tell us what the question was? No, I don't, I'm not comfortable sharing that. Okay. Um, but that was, that was right at the beginning. Yeah, what would the kids look like? Yeah, would... And finally, we have the very last lie that spouted out of Harry's mouth at the end. Here you go. Sticking him on the back of the bicycle in his little baby seat and taking him on his bike rides is something which I never I was able to do with. Well, I believe these photos show that he has selective memory. And once again, another lie. Finally, I want you to look at this clip at the very end because when the, when the interview was over, Harry looked stricken and Megan's laughing. Watch this. All right, you guys, so it's been three years. I want those comments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Leave those comments, make them good. Thank you.